There are countless pieces of advice on YouTube on how to improve at Valorant. You can literally spend hours upon hours of watching guides telling you this and that about how to improve, but to be honest, most of the videos you watch are just going to say these same exact things. Now sure, maybe in a 20 minute video you'd hear one or two new things that you haven't heard before, but is it really worth watching the entire video? for just one or two new things. That's why today we wanted to save you some time. We went through all these tips, all those videos, and all the tricks in them and compiled the 20 best pieces of advice that you could possibly need to rank up in Valorant. These are things I personally implemented that made all the difference in my gameplay on my climb from silver to immortal in Valorant. So. Buckle in and let's get you started with our first incredibly important tip, bait your teammate. Now, we know what you're gonna say. Wait a minute, baiting is bad, but we're here to tell you it's not always bad to bait your teammates. Bait setups are an amazing way to coordinate with your team. By performing a bait setup, you draw the enemy's attention to your teammate and proceed to capitalize on the enemies while their back is turned. Baiting entrying duelists is another form of baiting that's disregarded pretty often. Doing this is pretty simple too. Wait for your duelist to go in and be close to them, but not too close, in order to get an easy trade. Note that this is a great example of proper team play and fully utilize the purpose of your duelist. Now, you may actually see that some pro players look to hit sites super fast in an attempt to beat mollies just like this, but stuff like that is going to be pretty hard to execute in lower elos. What works for pros that play 12 hours a day and have godlike mechanics won't actually work for you in the ranks that you're stuck in with terrible teammates. That's why at Skill Capped, we teach the most effective way to climb ranks and improve from the perspective of the average player player. Don't believe us? Well, don't worry. It's completely risk-free to try us out and as you're kept safe with our rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you just get your money back and there's no questions asked. You can learn more at the end of this guide or check us out with a link in the description below. All right, now let's get into today's guide. Baiting utility is easily one of the most important things you can do in Valorant ranked. Simply put, baiting utility is creating presence in a commonly contested area of the map, for example, B site ascent. Once you have presence in that certain area, it'll be very common for the enemy team to utilize Molotovs and even smokes to shut down what they believe is a push from the attacker side. What this is doing effectively is making the enemy team burn through utility that would otherwise be very important for them if you were to actually hit a site on the map. Just remember, one molly from Brim can effectively kill an entire execution on site, so it is best to try and draw these pieces out. Out. Note what utility they've used in that attempt and attempt to hit another area on the map. This segues perfectly into our next tip, performing defaults. Defaults are simple yet very effective when playing against certain types of players. Typically, you want to run defaults into enemies that are more aggressive on defense. The act of defaulting can be confusing for a lot of players though, and a basic rundown of defaulting looks like this. Your team spreads out throughout the map and covers areas the defense side likes to take space in. Generally, after a certain time period, the defenders, if playing aggressive, love to push into areas of the map they believe to be open. From here, your team can capitalize on the defender's mistake and usually find a pick. Just make sure when defaulting that you're giving yourself the advantage in whatever fight you take. Choose the ratty angles here, and angles where you don't have to take a 50-50 engagement to come out on top. The enemy is pushing into you. Give yourself the advantage. This tip goes hand in hand with basic defaulting. Unrewarded defaulting is a mistake seen a lot with this type of play. Is defaulting and getting a pick, then choosing to not follow up on it. One of the most important aspects to a default is taking advantage of the chaos created with an opening pick. 
Once you get the first kill as an attacker on the default, it's smart to take space in the area you got the pick. This doesn't mean you have to execute, but you shouldn't allow the enemy team to recover the space where you killed their teammate for free. Now, if you don't execute after the pick, that's okay. Just try your best to not give the defenders back the space that you just worked to take. This is another common problem that I notice with attackers at a lot of ranks. You'll see this the most when attackers play a slow default against an already very passive team. What you'll see is the attacker side waiting for almost an entire minute every single round. Waiting and waiting and waiting all to find a pick that never comes due to the defender side's passiveness. If you're attacking and you're playing a standard passive default, but the defenders aren't giving you anything, this is a perfect signal that your team needs to make the first move. Make the first move here by taking space in a certain area, forcing the defenders to play and rotate around your team's pace. This type of play is extremely effective against overpassive defenders. Overplaying rounds is a mistake that's way too easy to miss. So our tip to you guys on this is just breathe. Your team may be overthinking things here, so simplify it. You don't have to run VCT strats to win a ranked game all the time. Sometimes simple takes are what will win you the games. There's no need to fake every single round. Just play the game and figure out the best play style to suit your team while playing. Does this ever look like you? <laughs> If so, maybe you're overpeaking. This happens so much, it's honestly pretty ludicrous here. Sure, just because you're a defender, it doesn't mean you have to exclusively play defense. But if you're consistently peaking middle and dying every round, take a step back and just reset. Play a bit more passive if you keep giving the attackers the man advantage straight away. Now, this also applies when your team already has man advantage. Try not to balance the scales in the favor of the attacker side when your team is already in the advantage for a round. This 100% is a very possible thing, and it's something that should be recognized if your team is losing a lot of rounds. If your team is losing and you guys are playing extremely passive, try mixing it up. On defense, try coordinating with your team to take space in certain regions of the map while playing defense. This can look like countering the enemy team's aggression in certain areas of the map. Now, ideally, you should take the enemy team off guard since you guys were already playing fairly passive. This works in favor of your team, effectively controlling the pace of the game from this point on. Team play is what separates winning versus losing teams in Valorant ranked gameplay. Once you recognize this, it's fairly easy to get the upper hand on most opponents if it's done right. Now, team play shouldn't be scoffed at. Valorant is a team game, so aim and mechanics is only going to get you so far, and it isn't necessarily as important as people make it out to be. Try calling strats for your team, be it an A take on ascent or a default while working mid control. Just use verbal cues, which will in turn get your team to start talking about what they think will work. Now that goes without saying, you can't win them all. This is a very important statement to remember too. Just understand that no matter what level of skill you're at, sometimes the enemy team is just way better than yours. And that's okay though. If you lose because your team isn't as good, just reset your mentality there. That's a pretty good life lesson and just make sure your mind's right and in a good spot to queue up again. Now, with that in mind, try to avoid tilt queuing. It's a very real issue players tend to do. It just makes their Valorant experience that much worse. Is tilt queuing really worth it? Think about it here. You lose hundreds of RR and time that could be better spent not losing hundreds of RR and playing Valorant. Well, we'll let you guys decide on that one in the comments below. Sometimes your aim really isn't the issue. It's your positioning. Now, some games you may feel like your aim is off and that that may be the case, but that doesn't mean that aim is exclusively what's losing your fights. More often than not, poor positioning can lead to lost aim duels and failed fights. So position yourself where you have the highest outcome of winning a fight. Earlier, we talked about the importance of team play. Let's briefly talk about monitoring what utility your team has. But first, make sure this is bound to a key. We recommend it to be bound to a key that is used often too. The reason this bind is so so important is because racking your team's utility helps you decide what your team can reasonably do at that point in the round. If your team's running very low on smokes and flashes, it may not be the best idea to contest an area of the map with long corridors and ops posted. So keep these things in mind here. Chances are, and uh, 
Not to be rude here, you're not the best player in the world at the agent that you main. There can only be one, so please take a chance to learn more agents. At this point in Valorant, if you've been playing for quite some time, there shouldn't be players that don't know how to play a certain role. And we understand that sometimes that simply is the case. We highly recommend each player diversify their pool of agents so that they're capable of playing someone in each role. Team comp is an important part of the Valorant Valorant professional scene, and it can be an important part of rank too. But you can win a game with any team composition. Take the Harry Cucumbers, for example, a team of one tricks that successfully wins Radiant games with ease on maps where their agents aren't best suited. Knowing that team composition doesn't always matter is just some important knowledge to stand by here. Sure, team compositions can make the game easier, but it doesn't mean that you'll lose if you have five duelists. Sometimes your team is simply better and pulls it off. So don't give up when you see no smokes or initiator on your team. Knowing what utility the enemy has in postplant is extremely important. Before leaving Seaside Ascent to play postplant long, take a note of what agents the enemy has. The first thing I always do when I leave site to play postplant is recognize if the enemy team has a controller alive that can smoke off the spike. We see this all the time. Defenders try to retake the site, but they're walking from A site all the way to C site. The enemy knows where you'll most likely be coming from. Speed things up a bit. There's only a few places they have to watch in the first place. Retaking too slow is a huge issue here. Once you get down to the nitty gritty of it too, you end up wasting 20 seconds of your retake just walking to the spike. Once you give away half your time, you only have so many seconds left until the spike explodes. Make sure you're being quick, but not dumb with the way that you play the round. Now let's take a step back for a second and talk about aim mechanics to improve on. Poor pre-aiming is something we see mainly from the low ranks all the way to Ascendant, and sometimes even Immortal too. Make sure when you're playing, you're always aiming where the opponents will be. Doing this technique ensures that you'll only have to make smaller adjustments in order to get a kill, rather than being surprised by an enemy and having to flick all the way to them. Now on the flip side, we see over flicking pretty often at the lower ranks. Now I'm going to talk about how to combat that here and run you through the reason that it happens. Generally, over flicking occurs when you're watching too much tense or too high of a sensitivity. These are the two generalized reasons for over over flicking. Now, if you're consistently over flicking, just take a chill pill for a second and take your time with your shots. If this doesn't work, you may be due for a sensitivity change. Changing settings is something that plagues the Valorant community. Usually, if you want to get better at something, you have to take the time to get used to it. Muscle memory is key to consistent gameplay. When you're constantly interfering with the development of muscle memory by changing settings, it'll in turn make you more inconsistent of a player. When you find a sense sensitivity that you're comfortable with, give it a good while before deciding to switch it because you're playing bad one day. Develop that muscle memory so you can easily find the signs that tell you to switch your sensitivity. Another reason for this, players tend to switch their sensitivity and start playing much better. The reason being, when you switch your sensitivity, your mind isn't used to it. Therefore, you're much more focused on your aim and much more focused on proper corrections. This is the reason why when you switch your sensitivity, you'll play better for a few days and then proceed to play worse than you were before you switched. Stretched res does nothing. It's just a placebo. The only thing Stretch does in Valorant is stretch out the HUD and lower your resolution. I myself am a CS player that played 5,000 hours of stretched resolution, but it was all for the reason of the stretched player models. In Valorant, it does practically nothing aside scratching an itch CS players have for playing stretched resolution. I myself play native after thousands of hours of CS in 4x3. So stop listening to all these Valorant gurus that act like a stretch is a must use to rank up. It simply isn't and never will be unless Riot decides to give us true stretched resolution. 
Ditch those other gurus and instead check out Skillcapped, where we've got you covered with dozens of tailor-made courses that will teach you everything you need to know about climbing up in Valorant. We'll teach you everything you need to know about mastering your mechanics so that you can start playing at an immortal level in no time. Along with this, we also upload tons of VOD reviews each week that our coaches record from looking at players just like you. So rather than just paying for one $200 coaching session on another platform, you can literally get access to hundreds of sessions for just a few bucks. Not only that, but our coaches that write this content is also at the ready in our Discord to take a look at your gameplay and tell you exactly what your issues are, if by chance you don't find value from all the other things we offer on our site. Use the link below for a discount link for your purchase today, and other than that, we here at Skillcapped want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.